The FBI director, James Comey, will not be, the former FBI director, I should say, will not be prosecuted over his handling of the memos that uh, the FBI later determined contained classified information. Despite a referral from the Justice Department's inspector general, uh, DOJ prosecutors declined to prosecute Comey, in part because they didn't believe there was evidence he intended to violate laws on handling of classified information. So let's discuss now. With CNN national security analyst James Clapper, he is the former director of national intelligence. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Clapper, Director Clapper, for joining us. James Comey is not going to be prosecuted. Um, that will disappoint the president. What's your reaction? Well, I agree. It will disappoint him and, and other uh, critics of uh, Jim Comey. Uh, I think it was, though, the right decision on, on, on for two reasons, both uh, in the interest of fairness and as well more uh, practical. Um, I'm quite sure, I, I never saw the memos that in question, but I'm quite sure that Jim, in his own mind, took great care to ensure that uh, there were not there was not classified information. And I'm told that what I understand is that retroactively the the FBI uh, classified one of them as confidential, which is a pretty low bar for uh, classification. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'd be curious what their rationale was for saying that one memo was um, uh, classified. So anyway, I think uh, ju you know justice was served here by. Uh, refusing to prosecute. I think actually they have a hard time making a case uh, before uh, a judge. Yeah. You know, the president was asked about ongoing Russian interference today, Director, and whether he uh, brought it up to uh, President Putin in his phone call yesterday. Watch <coughs> this. Mr. President, why were moments last week that Russia is interfering in U.S. elections right now? What is that uh, you don't really believe this. Do you believe this now? Okay. Okay. Fine. We didn't talk about that. Well, I watched Mueller. I'm not sure Mueller knows what's going on. So how is the U.S. going to stop Russia from interfering in our election if the, the president won't admit it's even happening? Well, that's what has uh, concerned me from... Uh, uh, for some, for many months now, because of, of the president's refusal, for whatever reason, to uh, acknowledge the, the magnitude of the Russian interference, and uh, I think a, a lot has probably been done to uh, enhance our security. But uh, the problem is, in the absence of the bully pulpit that only the president can speak from, uh, there is not. The galvanizing effect to warn people, warn the uh, American electorate of what the Russians and now I think others to, will emulate the Russians to, to interfere in our election process for 2020. So, you know, the president's response was very consistent with the last time he was with Putin and just kind of mockingly, jokingly made a joke of it. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he doesn't take it seriously. And I think the reason is, it goes back to when we uh, briefed the pre uh, pre then president-elect uh, on January 6th of 2017, mm -hmm. in which uh, he just couldn't get his head around it or refused to accept the, the evidence that we presented because it cast doubt on the legitimacy of his election. I think he's been very consistent about that ever since. Well, here's what he says. He claims the phone call was um, mostly about forest fires in Siberia. What do you suppose that means? Well, what, it, uh, what struck me is what he didn't talk about. Uh, for example, the demise of the uh, I, INF Treaty tomorrow, uh, the uh, Intermediate uh, Ballistic Missile uh, Treaty that, that's uh, been a, a pillar of a uh, Cold War uh, arms control agreement for, for decades, nor did he bring up uh, a potential extension of the New START, uh, st the strategic uh, mm -hmm arms reduction treaty. And so to me, these would be uh, serious issues that they, they, the two of them should discuss rather than the forest fire thing, which was, I, I think, a, you know, a buddy up gesture, but there's no, for reasons of sovereignty, pride and security, the Russians would never accept an offer like that anyway. Mm -hmm. And as for trade, I don't know, I thought we were sanctioning Russians, so we very difficult to trade with them. So mm -hmm. again, I think the most important thing here is what is the significance of the call is what they didn't discuss. Uh, Director, I want to switch gears now uh, to President Trump's nomination. 
of Congressman John Ratcliffe, a member of the House Intelligence Committee for the Office of Director of National Intelligence, your former job. This is what the Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said about that nomination. Watch this. This is about Pete War and Peace. If we don't have a DNI who speaks truth to power, who first is able to cull the facts and come up with an unbiased view of what they say, and in an un unvarnished way can tell the president, we're in a much more dangerous world than they would have been. I could hardly think of a worse choice than him, padding resume or not. It's, so I want to get your thoughts. Are you concerned that Rat Ratcliffe wouldn't uh, speak truth to President Trump and that he'd be just another yes man? Well, yes. Uh, now, I say this because I don't know Congressman Ratcliffe. I'd never heard of him until uh, his attack dog performance during the, uh, the Mueller hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's clear, I mean, the law stipulates that uh, the, the DNI is supposed to be someone who has extensive expertise in national security. And um, by practice, that's been the case with uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dan Coates and, and all of his, his uh, predecessors. I will tell you, I, I had spent 50 years in intelligence and run a couple of agencies for almost nine years. Mm -hmm. And being DNI was the hardest thing I ever tried to do. It, and it's a difficult job if you know something about intelligence. And if you don't, it's virtually impossible. Now, that all said, that's not why uh, the president uh, selected him. Uh, he sort of did an apprentice-like audition, I guess, for the hearing. During the hearing. Yeah, listen, I've got to run, but I just want to say that Gary Graff pointed this out, and he says, before becoming DNI, James Clapper had worked in U.S. intelligence for nearly 50 years and personally headed two of the nation's 17 intel agencies. By comparison, John Ratcliffe was the mayor of Heath, Texas, population <laughs> 8,000. Thank you, Director. I appreciate it. Thanks, Don.